everybody and welcome to another Thursday uh, recording with Web3 Weekly. I am Crypto Kenny. Today I've got Nate here with me again. We're going to do our, we try to do at least once a month here to do a, a uh, market update. And uh, since the markets have been kind of blah lately, we'll probably be doing a little bit of uh, some uh, educational material in here also. So uh, if you guys did not catch last week's video, we were on here with uh, with Bluefin from Bodega Blocks, um, and we were talking about the Bodega Blocks pl uh, project. We talked a little bit about the art, a little bit about the utility. He actually dropped uh, for uh, we were the first group that he dropped uh, their their basic investment strategy with Bodega Blocks. We talked a little bit about nodes and everything. So that's a really really good video, educational, especially if you're interested in those kind of uh, those kind of uh, um, uh, passive projects um, and and the, and and that 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 type of art too. There's a really great story with that art. So if you haven't seen that video, it'll be up here on the tag uh, on the top. Definitely encourage you to go back and check that out. Um, so if you want to, there's that there. Also down below, as always, we will have the links to the Alpha Mutants Discord. We are coming up uh, within the next uh, tentatively here within the next four weeks or so uh, to the uh, to the launch of the first class Alpha Mutants. If you guys want to check out some of the art, I got, I've been putting up some behind me here, but if you want to look at the latest uh, sneak peeks, if you want to look at the uh, white paper, the roadmap, any of the information that we've got going on in there, who we're collabing with, that's all available in the Discord. They'll have that link down below as well as our Twitter. Um, so feel free to jump in there and come and join us uh, with all the good news we've got going on at Alpha Mutants. So today, got uh, Nate back with us. We like to have him when we do market updates. Nate's in the markets pretty much every day um, in the NFT markets and the, the the crypto trading markets and all that. So we're going to go over what's been going on the last week or two um, in the crypto markets. So say hi, Nate. Thanks for being on again, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Hope everybody's doing well. And, uh, you know, it's it's been nice. We're moving, moving sideways. So we've actually seen some steady price action in the upwards direction. So that's been refreshing. Yeah, yeah, it's good to not see constant red days for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. my portfolio likes it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You and me both, but you yeah. and me both. So, um, so let's let's just look at a market update. So let's let's talk about just uh, just the crypto markets in general in the last couple of weeks. So, like you said, we've seen we've seen not uh, well, we're kind of moving away a little bit from the the heavy heavy downward pressure we've seen a lot of sideways movement a little a few couple thousand dollar swings in, in BTC up and down but it's been relatively between that like 195 and 2100 level um, you know for the past what couple of weeks now basically I um, mean just jump back and forth so what how do you feel currently about the market you know with BTC and, and what's been going on lately Um you know, in, in just the market and the macro scene and all that? Uh, you know, it's actually been, I will say pretty nice um, that it's been moving sideways so long that, you know, all of the, all of the downside was already, we've, we've seen it. It's been priced in, you know, the it, now it, it's weird those stance we're at now, because it's, if you look at it, it's the news, everybody's already expecting the news and it's already come. So we already know kind of the sentiment of where the economy's at. Um, so it's not to say we're not going to see further downside. We probably will, but you're not going to see those massive drops. I don't think anytime soon, unless we get some sort of big catalyst, just because everybody's kind of already had the initial sell off. Um, and obviously I think that the Celsius stuff and all of that shit going on at the same time was like, it created like the perfect storm, um, which is what caused us to drop you know, like 30, 40%. Yeah. So I think now you're going to see a lot of sideways movement. You know, we're starting to see a little upwards pressure. I don't think that that's going to hold over the next coming months. I do think you're going to start to see us eventually a slow bleed out downwards. Um, you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to speculate, but you know, my, my ultimate bottom target, if I had to truly guess would be like 12 K Bitcoin. You know, I think that's a very, very strong support. If we break that, you know, all hell goes loose. And like, but <laughs> But I think there's a good chance that that holds no matter what. Um, but I, I, whether we get down there or not, that's a totally different subject. But I do think you're going to see some downwards pressure over the coming weeks. But for right now, it's nice. You're probably going to move sideways quite a bit. Yeah, I think the argument is currently with it with a lot of the traders and investors that I'm currently in contact with the argument. There's almost two schools of thought now, and it's like, does the market really have the majority of all this bad news priced in? Or, or is it still coming? So 
you know, like I, I think I think it's almost safe to say at this point that that as far as like the C fi liquidations and bankruptcies and stuff, I think I think it's pretty safe to say at this point that most of that is is has been priced into the crypto markets. And I mean, because you know, now we've seen, you know, Celsius is is still looking for some way to get out of their their you know their potential uh, the potential liquidation of their short or their long, and then uh, uh, you know we saw Voyager declare bankruptcy today, I believe in like Virgin Islands or something, and they yeah. they, uh, they uh, I don't believe they ch- they they filed Chapter Eleven, so it was like a restructuring of some kind, but but they did file bankruptcy. Um, you know, you've got BlockFi having issues currently. You have you know half a dozen other smaller CFIs that are that are that are feeling the pain with this some of them getting bought out at pennies on the dollar by like larger companies and stuff i know ftx is looking in and put offers in at a couple of them and that binance has so we're really seeing this this just death of of cfi and and um you know, I wanted to ask you about that. Like, how do you feel about that? About like, yeah, I mean, because it, it's been every major centralized financial application almost. Like, if you would have asked me six months ago, you know, what are the biggest, you know, most uh, safe uh, uh, centralized finance applications? I would have, you know, BlockFi, Celsius, Voyager. Like, I, I and, and and today all of them are are having trouble. Right. As far as I know, BlockFi is the only one that you can still do withdrawals from um, currently. So it's so a <laughs> Fingers crossed. I got money still in BlockFi. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I actually pulled all my money out of BlockFi about four days ago. I was like, I don't, you know, it's not enough interest for me to yeah. care about that much. So I've already pulled those up, it, which I think is, you know, I don't know what your opinion is, but my opinion is, uh, you know, I, I feel almost like everybody at this point, like it just makes sense to get your money out of it right now and see what, I mean, you know, give it time and see what happens, um, you know, with this situation. Cause it's, it's just not worth getting your money locked up. I, I actually have some money locked up in Celsius. And I know many other people do, cause I, I didn't see that fast enough to get out of and who knows how long that'll be in there. Who knows if I'll ever get it back. You know what I mean? It could be a total loss at this point with the way that they're, that, that the, everything's going. So what's your, what's your feelings on just like basically the destruction of C5 and what we're seeing currently? You know, I think it's it's a it's a tragic thing across the board because, like, like you're saying, you know, they were pretty stable. Like, if you would ask me five months ago, I was like, absolutely not. That's crazy. Like, you know, there's just, there's a massive stable companies in the portfolio sizes and what's on their books and stuff. It's crazy. But I think it was a black swan event across the board. And I think you've got two two cases to this, right? Some you have just like ignorance across the board. And then some you have, it's just a perfect storm that some people just got caught up in. Right. And what I mean by that is like, you look at, you look at where those, some of those companies are, some of them, it wasn't that they mismanaged most of the books or anything like that. Part of it was they just got hit by the market because, you know, the implosion of, you know, Celsius and and all the other shit we got going on with the, the economy and all that, it just caused the perfect storm of people trying to withdraw their funds. When they withdraw the funds, they don't have the pools and the funds to cover, right? And you're essentially everybody across the board's getting hit. And so there's some companies that, you know, it's just the fact of the matter is we did not expect a 40% drop in a week like we got or whatever, but, you know, but the other argument to that is there are also some of those major investment capitals that essentially over leveraged their positions or, you know, their portfolios were way too deep in a certain sector. And you're looking at that now, and now it's like, well, shit, because nobody expected the drop like we had, you know, everybody kind of understood where the economy was going and stuff. And I think that everybody expected a slow bleed out because, you know, once you have, have a black swan event where, you know, an economy just crumbles, uh, unless it's just like, over inflation, right? Or just like it's on an exponential curve. A recession takes time. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't just drop overnight unless something drastic happens. And I think everybody expected a recession to come and we expected it to play out. But obviously, when the markets sell off 30% a week, I mean, hell, some of these firm, some of these investment capital firms, right? They can't even move funds that fast because there's not enough liquidity on the market. Yeah. So it's, I mean, that's kind of the, the situation and, you know, it sucks for people that had their money locked up in Celsius and stuff. I, you know, if I had to speculate, I would say that essentially like those block five funds, like even if the, your funds got frozen, I, I think you'd get them back eventually with the Celsius stuff, man, I have no idea. I mean, that's a, that's a whole other shit show right there, but. Well, I, th- I think you made a good point there because like the weird part about this is, is most people would have argued that if we did see a collapse of these C5 projects, that it would be due to 
uh, you know, a downturn market and retail borrowers not not, you know, paying back their, you know, their, their loans or getting liquidated, these type of things. But it wasn't that at all. It was a an act, you know, 3AC is really what what caused this entire downturn because they had massive um, under collateralized loans out with Voyager. They had massive uncollateralized loans out with with uh, with um, Celsius and and BlockFi also. So basically, this this you know invest this venture capital investment you know brokerage basically came out there and and took these massive you know super yeah. under collateralized loans and and basically tumbled everybody all at once. So it begs the question, you know, what what needs to happen? Does does CFI is CFI just inherently flawed or do we need a restructuring of how these things work because it's crazy that it was a such a respected, you know, investment firm in the in the the space in the crypto space that really caused this this landslide of like, you know, uh, liquidations and and bankruptcies and all this kind of stuff across the board. So it, I mean, it's 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 crazy when you think about it because I don't know if anybody could have predicted yeah. like this type of scenario. You know well, what I mean? Well, some of those things are so hidden hidden behind the scenes you're i mean you could dig all day long and not find it you know unless they like turn around and just open up their books and and you know all their loans that they've taken half that shit you can't even find because they're not publicly traded companies yeah and so i think i think it's twofold in that in that degree is you know i think from from an overall perspective there has to be more structure put into it and not i'm not just talking regulatory structure clearly there does but just structure from, from a a company's point of view, you know, I mean, you, the fact that they're going out and taking out these massive loans with one party to turn around and do the same thing with another, to lend those funds back out to people. If one of those systems grows down, that's the crux of the situation, right? The whole thing collapses because now you've, now you've got too many, too many fires on too many fronts. You can't put them out because you can't afford to cover. And I think, I think it was mismanagement with companies and I think that they have to turn around and take a look because that's obviously not sustainable long-term by any means. And you're seeing that, I mean, some of these companies probably could recover, um, you know, they're they're, without giving up total ownership, but some of them are going to get bought out for pennies on the dollar and you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I think, I think that the, on the table offer for BlockFi is literally 99% 99% less than their than their evaluation yes. six months ago. Literally buying them at one percent of their of their evaluation six months ago, and a lot of them are going to have to d- have to do those type of things because there's just no other way out of it. So it's it's a crazy situation. I think that I think a couple of the things we learned from this is is number one that there needs that that this is this is a good example of what regulation can actually help with, right? Yeah. So I think I think number one clarity. Like if you're going to be a publicly traded cl- company, it needs to be clear what you're investing in, right? Because nobody knew where any of these investments were because they, they just weren't they weren't readily available to the public. And I think too, um, I think it brings into question the ability in crypto to 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 lend and relend and relend and relend and relend and relend the exact same money. And so you have this huge amounts of leverage lending when, when like your base can be a million dollars and we have, you know, 450 million lent out on that $1 million, you know what I mean? At, at these huge leverage amounts, because that's what was going on. And a lot of this is just, you see, you see money being borrowed and then that money being put in as collateral to borrow more money and that money being put as collateral to borrow more money. It's this giant chain. And the problem is with that structure is, is whenever there's a link, a, a link in the chain that breaks, it really destroys absolutely everything. So I think, I think if we've learned anything, it's that those two specific areas need real, um, real uh, solid look at them, and and, to, and and you know some regulation there could really be helpful for the longevity of the market. But so well, let's talk about let's talk about NFTs. Let's talk about where the NFT market is. Um, so. What's your take on what's going on lately? I, mine is for what I've been looking at currently. So I, I'm seeing this meta of, of free mints that looks like it's been playing out the last couple of weeks. I think we're kind of getting to the end of it, but but I, I've I've seen where we we've seen quite a few free mints that have been pretty um, successful um, lately. Um, a lot of uh, satirical stuff. Um, I, I could cite a, a couple that I could see on the top of the of the. Uh, charts here um i think we've got i believe coke bears was a free mint god hates nfts was a free mint um we've got probably five or six of them in the top 20 here as far as like uh as volume and stuff on OpenSea. um and then i've 
I, I'm I'm seeing like you know I'm surprised at the strength of a couple of the of the blue chips up here specifically you know the board eight ecosystem looks like it's been holding up very well um, during all of this. Um, Clonex has been doing pretty much moving sideways, and then I've seen lately that some of the some of the um, older art uh, uh, like art block squiggles and fidenzas have been doing extremely well the last week or two. So what's your what's your take currently on just the NFT market and what we're seeing right now? No, it's, it's you know it's kind of you pretty much highlighted a majority of what I I would say is what to look for. You know I think we've talked about this right but before the the Nikes, Adidas is you know board apes those those true like ecosystems um, that are so far ingrained in crypto and not just in one sector and have the strong communities. Those are the ones to look out for. That's why their prices are stable, especially now when the market is now stable. You know, I mean, all those are the first ones to recover on the, on the asset blue scale, blue chip scale. Right. But I think, you know, as you start looking, you're right that the, the DGEN free mint play, it, I think it's still got some room to run with it. You know, I think it's still going to go on for a while, at least until the market truly does move sideways for a bit, because people are still technically scared, right? I've started moving more of my capital back into the market out of stable coins, not, not, you know, all of it or anything like that, but I've actually minted a lot more the past week and a half than I have in four weeks. You know, it, I think just that state, that stability that we have is a little bit reassuring. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm even victim to this. I think a lot of people lose sight that, hey, we're still not out of the bear. And, you know, sometimes we, it just clamors at us to get back into plays. Um, but there's a few good buys across the board, you know, and, and I think if you have that conviction to know what you're buying into, like, I don't think we're going to see another 50% drop, you know, from here yeah. anytime soon. So to me, it's like that the risk to reward is a lot better now, but I do think that you're starting to see a lot of the free mint plays. Um, you're starting to see uh, the art kind of plays recover. And I think that's because those have gotten to a point where so the, the, the true art plays are good investments long-term, right? Because those are what people want. I mean, you look at Gota, and I would have never thought this, for example, but you know, I think Cuba called it out the other day. That thing's actually gone to like eight and a half ETH. Yep. And what that tells me is the value in ETH did not increase technically it, it held its U S dollar value. So as ETH dropped, it went up from yeah. where it was, which is a solid play that tells me right there that those things are going to be stable and valuable long-term because no matter what happens to the price of ETH, your U S dollar value still remains the same. What you don't want to see is when ETH starts to tank, every play goes with it. Right. And yeah. it, there's no, there's no source of offset and balance system there. So I think the art plays are good long-term, especially like the, the ones that are more ingrained that have been out for a while. You know, I still, I would still put an asterisk on if you're going to get back into plays like minting one and then telling me that it's going to turn around and, and hold now it's value because like it's an art play or whatever. Right. Even some of these, uh, some of these free plays, right. That are actually holding their value surprisingly well for whatever reason. Right. Yeah. I, those are still not long-term plays. I still want to stay away from those personally, but have I capitalized on this? You know, I'm not going to give away too much of my, my training strategies here. Cause like, obviously there's a competitive market here, but you know, I've got burner wallets and I've minted, you know, a lot of DJ plays over the past week because I can capitalize on those. And I've made more this past week than I have in a month, but that's because the market is stable. Now, as soon as that market starts to have turbulence again, that's when all this shit's going to go out the window, but you do, you see these revolving, um, revolving trends, you know? Sure. Yeah. I think that that sums it up really well. Now it's like that there, it seems like there's, there's, uh, more potential and a, and a safer potential in some of these DGEN plays currently. And, it, and it's starting to look like a decent entry into some of these longer term, you know, blue chip established plays also. Um, I actually was looking into some, uh, I, I'm, I was really eyeballing squiggles and fidenzas the last couple of weeks. And I, I almost pulled the trigger on a couple of them. And now then they, then they started to, to, to do a little retracement back up again. So now I'm hoping that we see another downturn because I'd love to, I'd love to have those just for the history, um, you know, being the, the generative art first on the, on the Ethereum blockchain and all that. But um, so how do you feel about, we had an announcement earlier. I can't believe, I, I don't remember if it was probably yesterday, I believe um, that uh, the, one of the founders of OpenSea, um, Alex uh, Tala, Tala um, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that name, but uh, that he um, stepped down 
uh, from the from the project, citing that he wanted to focus on new ventures, um, but he is remaining on the board. Um, uh, did you have, have is that something that, that's come across you yet? How do you feel about about that? I, I always get I, I normally get semi skittish when I see things like that, but but the fact that he's remaining on the board kind of like doesn't I guess that doesn't uh, that doesn't bother me a lot. But but I, I think that. I think my point is with this is that we've been seeing a lot of government action against insider trading, against uh, rug projects and stuff like this. So I'm wondering if this is going to like flush out any of the the bad players in the space um, because of all of the announcements we keep hearing about uh, legal action being taken against these types of uh, these types of you know bad actors in the space. Um, you know, I think. From my own personal point of view, I, I do think there's regulation coming, especially to NFTs. I think like everything else, it's going to take an ungodly amount of time. It's like, you know, you hear them all, oh, we're going to do it this year. It's, we're probably not going to see it for another three years. Um, I do think that there are going to be systems in play, especially to, to, to document this stuff, because not that they're publicly traded or anything like that necessarily, but they're, they're still subject to regulation to a certain point, right? And, and I, you saw, you know, with some of these addresses and stuff getting leaked out from some of these companies recently that, you know, they're not, you're still susceptible to it. And I think from an overall standpoint, you're going to see it. Um, as far as the stepping down, you know, I, it's, it's tough cause you don't know that dynamic there. I mean, they, as a company, they could, they could be um, making it from a, a a publicity standpoint essentially where they yeah. say hey you know step down because they know that there's probably something there i you know i don't want to go that far to say that or anything like that but it, it, the fact that they're keeping them on the board i can't i can't imagine it's that bad but i do think that there is going to be a restructure of some of these companies and i think you know and i even said this the other day in, in our open general chat which you know everybody should drop in because there's a lot of cool um points being dropped in there and just market news and stuff but you know i use coinbase nft Per your suggestion last week for the first time right and you quickly find when you've used platforms and i'm not saying that OpenSea is the best platform in the world by any means right because god knows it has its downsides but when you use stable platforms to a certain point right that work that can get the job done with volume and stuff and then you go to a platform that you expect a triple a AAA company essentially to turn around and be able to operate and they do quite the opposite and it because like coinbase nft was a dog shit market right just their whole platform just like some of the things that the decision they made is like this makes absolutely no sense but i think when you look at those things you quickly turn around and see where the big conglomerates are and where the industry is going and i think you know this is kind of where we were back in 2018 with exchanges right yeah open c sucks like it sucks but all of the volume is there you know yeah. but and it's one of the quote unquote, most stable platforms, which I say that with a huge, a huge exclamation point. Right? Yeah. I mean, there are plenty of other, of other platforms available. The problem is, is that they're still not, they haven't gained enough traction, mm -hmm. right? I think Byte.io is a great marketplace, but there's practically nothing listed there, right? Yeah. And you've got to get the volume first. And I think that's what's happened back in 2018 with exchanges. Um, we only had Binance at the time. And even then it was still early stages, but you yeah. see what it grew into today. And I think that's kind of what they're doing is I'm not saying that there's anything shady going on there, but I think they're probably restructuring some of the way they operate because they know that they've got competitors on the rise Yeah, and, and you, you just adapt or die. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you on that 100%. And I, I watched mm -hmm. the volume on like the top five, six markets daily. And it's, you know, open sea, is you know a good 400 times larger than the next yeah. competitive market right so it's it's uh even when you look at like magic eden and stuff which is you know the premier market on solana even even their transactional volume i mean it, it's literally 50 times the transactions for you know the same amount of of, of like gross profit right so it's like it's it's uh, even in that that aspect of like open is obviously king on, on on that type of thing and and even at the volume they currently have like you know at the volume I, I think we've been hovering around you know um, like so I believe we had we've had some like twelve million dollar days or something like that for the last couple of weeks which is you know massively low we were seeing hundreds of millions of dollar days you know a couple of months ago um, so we're still seeing that but it, it brings into question to me like you know the the potential here because I mean if you can if you can uh, like, like look at and, 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 and see a 
value proposition in some of these new marketplaces opening up, um, betting on them currently, you know, to at some point reach a level similar to OpenSea. I mean, you you can easily you could easily see. 50 60 x is on your investment in those right like so th- there's there's massive potential there it's just so so early that it's hard to tell what the what the the retail market is going to accept as like a standard for this um for you know being able to to trade it I'm, I'm actually really optimistic about um uniswap acquiring uh gym xyz yep. and, and, and i i think i think decentralized uh trading of nfts could be massive I think that could be a massive thing without any fees, um, those type of things. Uh, I think that I, I think that's probably you know months and months away for them to iron out like how that's going to operate and everything. But I think at I think once that's done with, I think potentially I mean that could really revitalize Uniswap. Um, you know Uniswap's been in a real bad place for the last you know six seven eight months, but uh, but I think it really could um, you know there could be something there. What do what do you think about that? I don't think we've ever had a discussion about about decentralized NFTs. Well, you look at, you know, I mean, that's, you look at what Uniswap, the reason they've been in such a bad place, right? Why? Because they had so many competitors pop up, you know, when Uniswap was the big dog, they were the first ones to market with, you know, the, the alternative DEXs and all that, but, and, you know, the, the automated market makers, but when you turn around and you look at where they were versus where they are now, I mean, you have so many other competitors now. I mean, you got Pancake Swap and all these other ones that have popped up from all these other chains. And Uniswap, from an overall standpoint, has to adapt or die. And I think that that acquisition is massive because not only are they a stable conglomerate, right? But now they're, if anybody hasn't used Gem XYZ, go use it. The fact that it's a free tool and like that, it's probably one of the best free tools I've used on the market, you know? And like it's it's fantastic, and I think the fact that they integrate the two, you're you're talking about something that could change the game if they do it right, and I think that's kind of where OpenSea's at, right? I mean, look, the the only other true competitor in my mind at the current standpoint that would even come close to OpenSea is is Magic Eden, right? The problem with Magic Eden is they haven't bridged out from chains, right? They're still on Solana. I think if they turn around and get Ethereum and do it right and then bring Avalanche and all these other ones, you're going to truly see a massive competitor. Magic Eden's stuff is solid. They're, they're just the fact that they do the launch pad and all that. I mean, I don't think I've done a single mint through Magic Eden's launch pad that has failed. Like no, no technical problems, no you know issues with the team or anything like that because they do all their backend. I mean, you go to the launch pad page, it gives you all of the data you need, what the project summary is, tells you how many you know tokens are still available and all that stuff, zero technical problems. That is what you want from a stable platform. And I think the problem with that OpenSea has right now is they have so many technical bugs, but the only reason that people use them is because all the volume is there. If you get a true competitor, if OpenSea doesn't adapt their formula, which I think that's probably why you have some of the the changes in management coming because well, why, what better time to do it than now in a down market, right? I mean, you, you're turning around and looking because just like NFTs, there's going to become winners out of this market and there's going to become losers. And some of those losers will never recover, like companies included, you know? And I think that that's kind of the dynamic we're at right now. And I'll be, uh, to be honest, I'll be excited when I don't have to use OpenSea anymore. You and me both. I mean, I was I was excited at the launch of Looks Rare because I mean, you know, I, I wanted something else, and I mean, I still use Looks Rare anytime that it's it's doable. But like you said, it's 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 still we're still in that 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 place where the, just the volume isn't there for a lot of stuff, especially new things. You know, if you're talking about trading blue chips, it's one thing because you, you'll normally have the blue chips trading in some kind of volume on each site. But when you come to like new mints and like, you know, the, the early stage projects, it's really hard to find the volume sometimes. So, I mean, me, me too. Like I am, I'm, I'm really excited to see some competition in that market. I think it'll be really good for the entire NFT space to just have some competition and not be forced to go, you know, just one place to get it done. So, so hopefully we see that, you know, we see a lot of building during this down period. And then once we, once we actually see some upward momentum and traction, we start seeing some, some other projects come out and actually make some waves in the space. So what I know what I, what I, what I want to hit on real quick is anybody that knows me know, I knows I love trading tools and analytics, a good trading tool. Like it's giving you an edge over a market that is still super early. 
I've got people still in our group asking us like, Hey, what, what trading tools allow me to auto mint and stuff like this. And I would never advocate that you just set it and forget it and just like, let it run its course. There are tools that do that, but there's so much errors, you know, to, to happen. You can lose a lot of money that way. If you would put one bad number or gas number wrong, but having those tools can give you a massive edge over the market. The fact that you can, if, if you can list 10 wallets on OpenSea in an instant versus doing it manually, I mean, yep. God, the, the speed at which you save, like it can make you hundreds of thousands of dollars in the long run. But I think right now, the problem with that is, is you're seeing so many analytical tools and so many trading tools come out. And that's great to like help with contract minting and stuff like that. But you have so many analytical tools come out that are trying to integrate with open skin stuff because we still don't have like as good as some of these marketplaces are, you still don't have a good marketplace that has trading stats in it because the yeah. NFT market is now becoming not just a collector's market as what it started as now yeah. it is a legitimate trading platform. Yep. And I think you need those. And the first person that does it and integrates it well, I mean, God, that you're going to have, I mean, that's a whole other side. I mean, you're talking about an exchange for NFTs done properly. I mean, that's, that's a game changer, but we haven't seen it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm, I'm right there with you. I think that, I think that, and, and, and I believe 100% that we'll get there, right? Mm-hmm. I, it's just like, you know, we're, we're watching the development of the space and trying to guess, like us as investors and as, you know, education, uh, you know, ed- educators in the space, like we're trying to figure out like what is the next, you know, the next, uh, um, uh, like, the next integrations, the next, uh, the next developments, all these different things. And it's, and it's, it, you know, it's a, it's a big job because there's so many different things going on in the space constantly. Um, and you know that most of it is going to happen at some point. It's just in what sequence and where is it going to happen? So that's, I mean, that's the, that's the, uh, the, the magic trick of, of, you know, figuring out the space is being able to, to see a trend before it happens and, uh, you know, and capitalize on it. Speaking of that, speaking of, of, you know, capitalizing on trends and making profits in the space. I wanted to spend a few minutes here because we got about 20, 25 minutes left. I wanted to spend a few minutes here just to talk about, um, about just, uh, um, specifically a couple different areas that a lot, that, that the main areas that people focus on, on profit taking and on, on, uh, um, you know, uh, portfolio management in the space and to talk about a few safety, um, uh, procedures and best bets, uh, for those. Cause I think that that is something that's, um, it's something that's important. And I think that, you know, lately in the last couple of months, I've heard a lot of people talk about little mistakes they've made that have cost them, you know, hundreds, and in some cases, thousands and thousands of dollars in the space. So, and you're, you're a good guy to talk to about this because you're involved in, in a lot of different areas of the market. So I, w- I wanted to cover just three basic things here. So in my mind, in the space, I, I, I see, you know, three, three big areas of, of, uh, of, uh, trading and, and three er- three big areas of, of potential profit taking in the space and that's that is um, investment in, in the crypto markets itself or portfolio management in your in your normal crypto markets um, NFT trading and speculating and then um, uh, 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 longing and shorting the market or leverage trading so in each one of these the interesting thing is you can be a master at one of these and you can completely lose the house on another one Right. Because th- there's different ways and, and different techniques to protect yourself in each of these markets. So I'd like to take, you know, maybe maybe seven, eight minutes a piece and just kind of go over these things. So let's talk about for a second. Um, so structuring a portfolio in this market, particularly in this down market. So if it, let, let, let's talk about people that are trying to set up their portfolios, DCA into their portfolios into this current market. And they're trying to build a, a good portfolio for the for the next bull cycle. What is your advice on managing risk in this current market when it when we're when we're discussing portfolio building and portfolio management? You know, I think it's for me it's it's a little tough to answer because everybody has their own different you know financial situation, and I think they're, they're one you need to understand the market, and I everybody has their own knowledge base too, right? I mean, if some people have jumped into the market, this is their first bear market, and they jump in and only get into NFTs because that's what they gravitate towards. To, you know, that's fine. You're you're missing out on the other side of the market, which is you know probably even more stable to a certain point than NFTs are, but you know you need to understand where your bread and butter is. If if the NFTs are what you understand, trade that you know, study that because if you do a little bit here and a little bit there, 
it's, it's very tough to, to understand the movement of the dynamic because things move so fast. And there's so many, especially in the NFTs, there's so many mints coming out these days that are, you know, now there's free and DGEN and all this shit. It's hard to find the best play and what's going to be good and profitable for your portfolio long-term. Whereas if you went into the, to the actual crypto markets, the coin markets, and you just entered any of the top like 25, for the most part, you're going to be pretty stable, right? But you're not going to make the massive returns you're going to have. So I think everybody needs to understand financially where their strengths lie and where their risk management is. For me, if, if it were me personally, and I, this was my first market that I'm getting into, right? I would only trade the top cap coins, large caps. I mean, at this point, like those are your most stable. If you're trying to be in the space long term, that's where that's where you need to focus on, um, and especially because a lot of those things kind of bleed into NFTs, right? You can't run Ethereum without can't run NFTs without Ethereum, vice versa. That's where I would put most of my portfolio. But as far as a risk management standpoint, right? somebody that has a hundred thousand dollars to put into the market, right? You can diversify significantly better and your risk management standpoint is going to be much different than somebody who's got 600 bucks to work with. Right. And so for me personally, like, I'm not saying don't get NFTs. NFTs are great, but uh, you and I both know that, you know, to, to get a solid long-term play right now, those things are, you're probably looking at five, six, seven grand minimum for some of the good plays ultra long-term. Right, yep. that are that are going to be stable. No matter if they, if they do drop and they fall a little bit in price, that's fine. If you're going to hold them long term, because they're probably going to be the ones recover, right? But you can't put in five hundred dollars and probably walk away with something that's going to make you five x in an NFT over the next three months. Yeah, it's just not. I think, I, I think that's a good point too, because what what I would advise is, you know, it's it's good that we talk about different levels of portfolios. Because if you if you're a big bigger player in the space and you have a a substantial crypto portfolio that is bolstered with, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and a couple of these top layer L1s um, that are more solid. You've got some dry powder on the side, buy dips and these type of things, continue DCA. It's a lot easier to um, to get more involved in the NFT market because I think I think it's almost a necessity to have some kind of uh, footing in the in actual crypto uh, 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 uh trading that before you even get into nfts because of the speculatory nature because I, I view nfts the same way i, I view low cap altcoins right because yeah. if we're just if we're looking at market caps you know what i mean it's it's about the same you know you're looking at a billion dollar market cap or two million dollar market cap on, on most of these nft collections which in my mind is a is a very you know low cap altcoin so the risk level is about the same there you know in my mind so I, what i what i think is someone that has limited funds into this i i think that that um, I, I don't like to talk about people having like, you know, like you said, like, like five or 600 bucks to put in the market. I like to talk about how much do you have each month to put in the market or how yeah. much do you have each week? Because to me, it makes it easier because um, in, in that scenario, so say, say that they only, so say that they, they, that a person only has, let's say, you know, for, for, for uh, um, simplicity's sake, they only have a hundred dollars a week, right. They can put into the market. So, so $400 a month. Um, what I would what I would suggest in building a portfolio over that time is to the majority of that, the, the largest portion of that, probably 90 percent right off the bat every week would to, to would go into, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum instantly to create some kind of base. And I think that that the the, the um, when we look at like uh, I mean, it's always good to have a, a small portion of your portfolio in something that could really run. Um, but but at that level, I don't even think that 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 goes into that, that goes into NFTs. I think that that goes into, you know, some mid caps or something like that. Your additional five or 10 percent so you can have a little bit of, of higher upside potential. But I think that until you have a good base and people ask what a good base is. And it really just depends on what you, what what kind of I mean what your what your goal is like. Do you want to make a hundred thousand dollars in the market? Do you want to make a million? Do you want to retire off the market? It answering those questions in different ways uh, dictates a different a different amount. If somebody wants to make a hundred grand in the market, you know, work your way up to a you know to a half a bitcoin, you know, four or five Ethereum. Get to that point first before you start diversifying into other things. If you're wanting to, you know, do more than that, if you're looking to get into the market as a, as a full-time thing or something like that, you know, you need to be looking at, you know, you need to be a one coiner at least with Bitcoin. You need to be looking at 10, 20 Ethereum plus in the bag. And then you can start looking into chain link and, you know, uh, uh, soul and things like that. But to, 
to uh, once once I think that once you have that that stable level, depending on what it is, and it, and if you guys anyone watching this wants to like needs more of you know you have a different situation and you want to talk about how you know someone that's been in the market like you know me or Nate for for a long time how we would structure what you what you have to put into the market feel free to jump in the discord and ask us those things guys because we'll, we'll definitely jump on and help you but I think that once you have that base then that's when we start talking about making um some some more high risk bets because I I do absolutely think that every well balanced portfolio should have high risk bets in 100 percent 100 percent. if you ever want to make money in the space if you want to retire at 65 and, and have a decent life then buy bitcoin and ethereum uh with you know the money that you have uh that is that is expendable and sit back and let it grow and, and you'll, you'll be fine but if you really want to make money money in the space if you want to make fu money in the space at some point you have to graduate to being speculative right at some point you do because um, we're, we're at a point right now with Bitcoin and Ethereum that you can make good money, you know, 10 X is over the next few years, probably, but, you know, potentially maybe 15 or 20 over another, you know, 15, 20 years, but you're not going to make, you know, hundreds or thousands of X's with these things. Right. Um, it's just not going to happen. The, the, the market cap isn't there. Um, so I think that once you have that comfortable base, that that's when you take a small percent each month or each week or however you're you know putting your funds into it and you can put that into nfts and i think the best way to start in nfts everyone always asks me this i, said, I think the absolute best way to start in nfts is free mints 100 i think it is i think if, if, if you're brand new to the space get on as many free mint whitelists as you can it's not that hard like just troll twitter for a while and you'll you know you'll get on some free mint whitelist flip some of those and don't I, I don't even particularly think that you should you should put a lot of money in it at the beginning you know get some of those free mints flip those free mints put those into some um, some more smaller mints you know 100 buck mints 150 buck mints and, and have a complete flippers attitude on that and learn everything you can about volume uh, and, and, and trading volume get in a good group like alpha mutants and, and be on VCs listening to, to mint Tom uh, uh, you know, analytics and stuff like that, get you some mints going on and then pick a particular project that is, that is, you know, it, that is regarded as a blue chip for the majority of the market. You know what I mean? So, so I mean, it doesn't have to be my per what I personally decide to be a blue chip, but it needs to be something that's up there and work towards that project, right? Work towards that project and, and, uh, and, you know, start on a lower collection and, and move to a higher collection. And it gives you, the time frame it takes you to move from free mints into like smaller mints and get those things done. The the education that you'll get during that time frame and the feeling for the market um, will be very very beneficial. And so by the time you get somewhere where you can afford a couple of Ethereum to get into a project or three or four or five Ethereum to get into a project, at that point in time you have a much better understanding of you know what the market, how the market moves. You you have this. It's hard to explain, but just like in the stock market, you have this 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 uh, this almost um, uncharacterizable uh, um, feeling about the markets, and you can make some decisions based off of guts um, in that. And I think it's I think that's very useful. So one other thing I was going to say is so so comparatively in in you know when we're talking about portfolio management and everything like that, it's it's a little bit different when we're talking about like uh, like uh, longing and shorting the market and and leverage trading, right? So I want to talk about this just a little bit because it's a, it's a different thing because we can talk about, you know, crypto portfolios. We can talk about NFT portfolios and, and they're basically structured the same way. Put the majority of your money into blue chips, you know, do some quick swing and, and day trading in the smaller things that that go into the blue chips, buy the dips on the blue chips, you know, create a portfolio based on those things. Uh, it's a completely different thing when we're talking about mitigating risk with with uh, when we're when we're speculating on which direction the market's going. Um, so there's a negative connotation sometimes between leveraged trading, and I, I personally do very little leverage trading. It has nothing to do with that. I don't think it's a good tool. I think if you're well disciplined, it's a fantastic tool. Um, it's just at my portfolio size, it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So it, depending on your portfolio size, it can make a lot of sense. So let, let's hear from you, Nate. So what do you, what do you think the the if you had to put three or four basic you know rules to longing and shorting the market or or leverage trading? What would some of those rules be that you would that you would tell somebody that was that was getting into that or wanted to expand their their crypto knowledge into that particular sector? Um, you know, I think the first thing I would say is risk management, and that comes with any 
any sector you get into and any focus that you have, right? Because the whole idea with leverage trading, and I, this is where I personally probably differ a little in opinion than you do in this, mm-hmm. is that I, I think leverage trading can help in any portfolio size, but it comes at a much bigger increased risk, right? I mean, you have a chance that if you don't, if you're not disciplined with it, you can lose it all. You can get liquidated and, and everything that you put in is gone, right? Into that trade. But the, the volume on that you can have when you're trading, you can't, it's very tough to leverage coins outside that are not a large cap coin, right? Yeah, and you can't leverage obviously NFTs or anything yet. You might be able to one day in some, some aspect. But so right now, the, if you had a portfolio of $100,000, if you went to any major exchange that allowed you to do leverage trading, you could leverage all that hundred thousand dollars in an instant. You could get the liquidity for it and back it, you know, five, 10, whatever X you wanted to, because the liquidity is there, right? You, if, if I was on a risk management standpoint, cause you have to look at this from a, from a scenario aspect, right? If I was a new user coming in and I had, let's say 10 grand to work with, right? If I didn't do leverage trading, you're, you're capping your gains, right? Because I can do one of two things. I can essentially buy an NFT and hold it. Um, if I was just playing the NFT side, I can buy an NFT and hold it like a blue chip, right? I could probably make money in the long run, but I'm going to be holding for a few weeks to months, probably, if not you know, a year or two, depending on how long it is. So your, your gains there are capped to a certain degree, right? It's, it's a lot better game, but you, you, you can't make the money in and out like you can. Or you can take that and you can buy a, a shit ton of DGen plays and you can mint anything and everything under the sun and hope you hit on you know 10 burner wallets or whatever you're going to do, turn around and flip those, right? But the hardest part about that is, is some of these things you have to be whitelisted for. You have to show up on the, on the mint dates. You have to monitor the contracts. You have to turn around, trade it on secondary. You have to monitor volume. It's a pain in the ass. So getting volume in and out of those plays is really tough. So if for somebody who's got a smaller portfolio size, that's the idea with leveraging, right? For anybody that hasn't used it, you can essentially put in a hundred bucks, 300 bucks, $3,000. And you could, you could essentially borrow against your capital, leverage a much bigger position, trade that, turn around and pay it back and essentially walk away with more money. You increase your gains that way. But the problem with that is, is that, and shame on platforms for doing this because it used to be when we first saw leverage trading at the market, you know, you got anywhere from one to three X. And if you were lucky, maybe a five X. Now you've got some platforms allowing you to trade leverage up to like 50 X, which for anybody that doesn't understand how leverage trading works, like essentially, like I just said, you borrow money against your capital by taking out, you're essentially taking out a temporary loan on the money that you put in. Um, You're turning around and trading that entire batch sum and then once you turn around and sell that position, you'll pay it back. If you get liquidated, they keep your whole position. So yep. if that position moves too far in one direction from your initial starting point, based off the leverage percentage that you had, if you trigger a liquidation, you lose it all. Okay, That essentially pays the lender back to some degree. The problem with that is, is that people over leverage. It's, it's easy to turn around and say, you misread the chart and you say, oh, I think this thing's going down. And hell, here's an example. I did it today my portfolio size, I've allotted some of my riskier management to the leverage side. I took a trade today. I made 18% or whatever it is on it. I turned around, I watched the chart about an hour later. I was like, oh, here, it went back up to my, here's my, here's my support level. I think it's going to, it's going to break down from here. So what I did, I turned around and over leveraged. I went to like 14 X um, thinking, Hey, it's going to go down. As soon as it broke that level, what happens is, is the volume spikes up because everybody else has seen that it spiked up. And in a matter of five minutes, I was down 30%. Whereas 10 minutes ago, I was up 25, 30%, right? Yep. So it can, the, the fast, uh, the more you leverage, the quicker that shit can turn. And from the time it took me to turn around and click this, the close button to close out my position, it had moved another 15% because the volume at what I leveraged just moved way too quickly. And that's where people get that's where people get underwater with it is they think, oh, hey, I can make this amount of money. And you can, once you start seeing a half a percent move and you make a hundred bucks, oh fuck, that's fantastic. Yep. But you never hear about the downside and the downside comes 10 times faster. Yeah. Well, I, I think it also to add to that, I think that, I think that, you know, people, they look at those, when, if, if you have no, if you don't understand, so, so two things here. So if, if you, if you do not understand even the basics of technical analysis, you have no business leverage trading. 
Okay, so number one, so we're not encouraging anyone to leverage trade. If you don't understand the basics of technical analysis, support levels, uh, Fibonacci retracements, stuff like that, then do not trade. Okay, learn to get some knowledge in that. You need to understand those uh, concepts. You need to be able to do basic charting yourself, um, all that stuff. Um, it's even even though there are bots and stuff out there today, you should not even take the trades that bots have unless you understand why they are making those trades. So that's number one. Okay, number two is. To give you an example, to give people an example, like they don't understand. So, so there are many sites that will allow you to 50 leverage. There, there's still some sites that allow you 100x leverage. Okay, so this is initially taking. So a good example of this I give people is, is you can put 50 or you can put 100 dollars on a site, and if you take 50x leverage, that you are borrowing 4,900 dollars. Okay, that they, they are giving you that as as like your that's your leverage amount. So you're actually trading with 5,000. Okay, so the 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 your ability to be liquidated there becomes vastly, vastly uh, 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 higher. So a good rule of thumb that I always tell people is once you have a decent working knowledge of, um, of you know, charting and, and uh, TA in general or technical analysis, that once you do that to whatever portion of money you have allocated to this high risk uh, leverage trading, that you only trade around three to possibly 5% of that amount at a time. So that if you are liquidated, at most you lose three to five percent of what you've allocated to doing the the high risk um, uh, leverage trading with, and and so here's here's another another rule that I learned with because I was in the forex markets for years and you always leverage trade in the forex markets. So in the forex markets, that what what we what you the standard was that if I had a hundred thousand dollars that I would never put more than three to five thousand uh, dollars. Uh, in, in any trade, in any trade ever, um, that would be that would be the standard. And then I would only take between three and possibly between three and seven percent, or between three and, and seven x uh, as far as a trade. Because once you get beyond that, it just it's it moves so fast, it's it, it's terrible. Then another good rule of thumb is that you have to have very defined take profit levels, right? So, so your, your, your take profits, normally what I would do is I would do a take profit at between two and 4% and a stop loss between one, one and 2%, right? Right. So that if you do get stopped out, you're losing less versus your upside. So your downside is less risk than your upside. So at that point, if you only win 52% of the time, you still in the long term make money. If you follow that, you actually end up making something like 65, 68 percent um, in, in the long term um, based off of your higher upside, lower downside and the, and only winning that many trades. So it has to be very mathematical and it, it is not for anybody that gets emotional. If you see if yep. you see something start to start to run and you instantly pull your stop lo loss off a little bit, and you're going to try to run with that. You're going to get cleaned out every single time. I've seen it a thousand times. It's so that. That would be, you know, my couple rules of, of uh, mitigating risk in, in leverage trading. Yeah. And before you guys get in there and do that stuff, I would recommend you learn what all the different tools are because there are some platforms offer certain certain cancellations, limits and stuff like that. And what I mean by that is certain platforms will do what's called a trailing stop, right? So you can set a percentage or a price point essentially in a if, if you're, if you're like, let's say your entry comes here and it, and it goes up, your trailing stop will go with it. So if, yep. if your stock drops back down or your trade stops back down, it'll trigger that trailing stop. You, you lose a lot less. A lot of platforms won't allow that. Why? Because it essentially that, that hurts them in the long run, right? Because they want you to get liquidated. They yeah. want, the, <laughs> that's how they make all their money back. And yeah. so moving your stop loss, having that discipline to say, okay, I'm up 15%. I'm going to move my stop loss up 5% now. That way, if it goes the other direction, you've now lost less than what you would have lost in the beginning. And you've essentially, once you're in profit, you've already made money if you do it right. So well, I think, I think you make a really good point there because a lot of people don't understand this, that, that the reason why these, these uh, services are in business and available is because they make money. And the way they make money is for you to lose money. Right. People don't understand this. So so what you have to understand is when you when you look at these these things, the majority of people have to lose for a few people to win. Right. This isn't a this isn't a we're all going to make it scenario. Um, so so the, I, I give people the same advice as getting into any area of this space. You have to be smarter than the majority of other people that are doing this. Right. 
So that's why I tell people, you know, don't get into these things without, you know, hours and hours of research and understanding what you're doing, because the edge comes when, when you are the, the, you know, or when you're in the top, you know, 10 to 20% smartest people in the room, you have a much larger chance of making profits doing this type of thing. Because I'm telling you, 75% of the people on these and probably a higher amount are the ones losing so that the, the top 10 to 20% can win, right? Um, so education, like any other area of this space, is absolutely, you know, needed. And I, and I yeah. think that's something that doesn't get said enough because I think we, too many times, we, we, we allow that fantasy of, well, you know, you can learn a couple things and you can jump in and you can get rich, right? And that's not how it works with anything. It, that That's not how it works in any market, anywhere in existence. It is the people that dedicate the time to uh, to learn and to educate themselves and to be unemotional and to have a system that make money. Uh, everyone else is just exit liquidity. Everyone else is just the, just, uh, you know, paying, just taking from their pocket, putting into yours. So um, yeah. I think that's something that needs talked about more. It's funny. Cause I look at it like, like a casino to a certain degree, this is not gambling by any means, you know, like if you think that you're gambling, this is not for you. Cause there is a strategy to be out of here. And if you follow even the best traders, the, be- the best traders follow trading rules. It, you know, if, if I walk into a supermarket and I turn around and say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to manage my money, right? I'm not going to walk in there and impulse buy everything I see. I'm going to yep. say, I'm going into the specific store to buy this specific item. That's how you manage your risk, right? So with, when you come in here and you say, okay, I'm going to open this trade. Here's my level. I'm going to stop out at that level or, I, or I'm going to take profits and run just because you, you think, oh, hey, I've seen, I'm up 30%. I'm going to let it ride. That's how you get burned. Yes, you might get lucky, but you're gambling at that point. And if you go into a casino, right, even the best gamblers in the world have a system. If you go into blackjack, right, and I've never really understood this because I'm an analytical guy. So when I go to the casino, I don't really play much else except for blackjack because you have the best odds of winning that against the house, right? Because you're essentially playing you versus the house. That's it. You're not against everybody else on the table. But even with blackjack, there's a, you know, there's principles that you can follow to turn around and say, I'm going to bet X amount. If I lose it, I'm going to double it. Mm -hmm. If, If I lose that, I'll double everything that I put in. If I win, I go back to square one, right? Just steady stacking is the way to go right yep. it's it's, fu- it's funny you say that because the only game i ever i don't i don't gamble hardly at all but the few times a year that i do it's uh i actually i actually uh uh don't pro- well I, I like poker because i think there's a social there's a uh, there's a uh, psycho- psychological element to it so yeah. you know that you know, human error you can play off of and everything but honestly if i go to a casino i only ever play roulette because yeah. because roulette is the is the only thing that there is some skill involved with blackjack and I'm terrible at like card right. games in general so that you have to understand like you know the splitting and all this kind of stuff and I've just never got into it but with roulette it's literally just numbers so it's it's so so to me that's the only kind of gambling I do because I tell myself that you know that that there is a there's a numerical system and that's how that's how I I bet well, even it. even roulette black or red man black or red you know, yeah. don't go numbers yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so like, uh, um, yeah, you know, I, I, th- I think that, that, that's a really good point is like, you know, th- th- it, even, even with high risk stuff, like, like leverage trading, you cannot go into this and just go lowing your money into, into something and praying that, I mean, I've seen guys drop, you know, a few grand into a, into a 30, 40 leverage trade, not knowing which way the market's going to go, yep. no kind of analytics at all. And just be like, well, it's either going to go up or down. It's like, no, it doesn't at all because you never know what side of the market is leveraged higher and the markets love to liquidate. Um, so you have to look at these things. So even when I do trading, like I'm always looking at, you know, what is the, what is the percentage of longs and shorts in the market right now? Because a lot of times the market likes to liquidate these these big areas, and it's like it, it to do something like that is, is completely um, you know you're you're going to get you're going to get burned. So yeah, you have to have a system. And well, and I'll and, say for anybody that is looking to leverage, like if if you're going to do it, study up a little. But if if you really are going to do it, I would highly advise don't exceed a five x leverage. And even then, I'm I would stick to a three or under, right? Yep give yourself some breathing room. So if it does move against you, you're, you're fine and trade the, the longer timeframes. If you're yep. trying to day trade, that's the hardest thing you're going to do in the yep. stock market. If you try and day trade in crypto, God help you. Cause like yep. you are a special kind of person, but you yep. know, but for sure. stick to the higher timeframes for sure. And you'll, you'll save yourself a lot of headache. For sure. For sure. So we're coming up on the end here. So guys, I hope you, I hope you got some, you know, useful information. 
out of that. Um, you know, we try to bring you as much as we can. Um, we've got some real interesting episodes coming up that we're going to have some interviews with some, with some uh, real different uh, personalities and experts in different areas of the space. Hope you guys keep tuning in and everything. Please like and comment the video so we can continue to get tools and, and update on, uh, on YouTube here and some of our other platforms. But so, you know, I mean, all, all together, uh, you know, we had a kind of short breakdown of the market, and that's basically just because we haven't seen a lot in the market lately. A lot of a lot of moving sideways, which in in, in uh, you know, like what what Nate said this week, sometimes those are the best times. You know, he said he's done some real good profit this week in trading because of the stability um, in the market, and just we haven't moved around a whole lot, not a lot of volatility. So, um, you know, if you guys want to, it, it, once again, always I put this in here. If you guys want to learn any of these areas that we talk about. Please come into the Alpha Mutants Discord and, you know, look at some of these things. We have information galore on, um, you know, all these different areas. And we have people um, that, that are on the team and that are that are contributors to Alpha Mutants that can help you out in so many different areas. There's so much knowledge to be done here. And even someone like myself that's been in the space and, and Nate also for such a long time. And I mean, I can't speak for him, but I know that I, I learned almost every day, almost daily. Um, you know, um, a different, different, um, plays to be made in the space, different, uh, different, um, DEXs that could be used, different trading tools that could be used. And so there's so much information that, that you can get from getting into a community and coming in there, um, and, 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 uh, becoming part of a community. I think it's the, probably the number one thing I would recommend for anybody coming to the space. But anyway, so, uh, Nate, any, any final remarks on the market, anything, interesting you want to tell people to be looking at during the next week or so or anything to be staying away from um go ahead and give us your final final thoughts on anything no, man, we've I, talked about i would just say you know i mean for me just like playing these dj and plays man if, if if you're following the ones that have a good following and a good volume and like especially the ones that are very unique um I will say it's more of a gamble for sure, because like, you don't know, there's not, there's no roadmap utility team base. Like it's, it's really hard to peg, but those first movers in certain sectors into the, if it's a unique art or unique concept or whatever, those are the ones that seem to run. And those are the best ones to get behind. And there's a hell of a lot of money to be made in it, but you can also lose your ass on it. So for me personally, I've de-risked it. You know, I go for the free mints now. It's, it's good. And I follow, I only do the ones that are hyped the ones that have like massive followings and stuff, but there's a way to make money in this stuff. And if you can do it, I mean, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, but I think, you know, I, I was watching the, um, you know, the, the other side, their, their metaverse is they opened their beta today. So to, for all their holders and like zero lag on the server. I mean, everybody was doing flips, hundreds of players, you know, doing flips and running around and stuff like in their metaverse. And it, was, it looked pretty sick. So you know, I made a call like a, a week or two ago, those things have moved a little bit, but I would say go other side would be the one I'm looking at just because their launch is right around the corner. Um, but I think it, it's, there's going to be a lot of good plays coming out, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And I, I actually was going to ask you about that earlier because of the, you know, uh, to, to ask if you, you know, what you, what you saw coming out with the other side, I, I honestly think, and this is just kind of an extra throw one, um, currently right now with 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 metaverse plays i, th I think i think other side they're a little bit overvaluated i think for where they're at i would like to see them more at like 2.5 um yep. you know between between two 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 and 2.5 they're, they're at almost three currently um but but if if you do see uh the the other verse land plays i mean yugo labs has done such a good job um, with with development and with marketing and just I mean they, they've done such a good job I I have nothing bad to say about Yugo Labs they've done almost everything for except for except for they're they're only minting an ape coin I thought that was a dumb idea but you know it, it's fine they've got the money to cover it but um but yeah if you see that that's a that's a that's a play I would feel comfortable telling people if you see a a dip below the two point five mark um, more towards the two if you if you're really wanting to de risk on it um, I I do I do believe that long term that, uh, that other other deeds will be uh, a good play over the next you know 24 months or so so um, that's that's something that uh, that I would definitely get behind and, and talk to people about so but all right uh, we don't go over too much thank you guys again for joining us here for web3 weekly come back each week and uh, check out the videos get some knowledge together uh, we offer all this stuff for free currently inside of the discord where that's only going to be going on for the next three weeks or so um, three four weeks so get in there and get every you know check it out test us this is this is why we've opened the discord to uh the public currently because we want everyone to experience the value that's that's being added 
um, we, we constantly have upgrades. Um, we, we've got a couple things like even beta testing now that we haven't released yet. We can't really talk about, but, th but uh, more utility upgrades coming. Um, and we'll, we'll constantly be developing those things. So come in, test out some stuff, see if, uh, if you want to get around for the mint, if you do, there's plenty of ways to get involved. Um, we're going to be doing some, some uh, in Discord giveaways. We're constantly doing Twitter giveaways. We're trying to get as many people that are following us into the whitelist. If you if you want a whitelist, there's plenty of ways to, to get to it. Uh, we will be uh, heavily giving out those over the next couple of weeks. So you guys definitely come in, check us out, um, get, become part of the community. I know you'll enjoy it. But anyway, we'll see you guys next time uh, on Web3 Weekly. We'll see you next Thursday. Everybody have a good week. Stay safe. Um, you know, follow your 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 plans. Um, follow your risk management, and uh, let's all make some money. Later.